Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here at Crate Sci-Fi. Today's going to be a fun day, right? <laughs> so uh, today I want to do uh, some mech models that Joe uh, Larson, the 3D printing professor, sent me. Uh, he's doing a Kickstarter for this, and these are the the printer block, the the mechs. What's exciting to me about this? It's almost like a like a controlled kit bash, right? So if you wanted to get into kit bashing, this is a way to do that. So the idea is that you know you put together the parts, but they all lock together, and if you want to add extra ones, you can print them as you need them. Or if you mess up, you could just go back and reprint, or like I said, print more. Um, so basically, I think what it is, is you get the STL files. And, um, oh, this is just exciting to me because what happens inevitably is, you know, we're always doing things on a budget, right? And always trying to do low cost, high impact. And then what inevitably happens is if, if you get something to work, if it's like problem solved, right? So you tend to repeat that. So what I find, what I do is I have a certain type of paint job maybe like three variations of it and I, and I do that a lot so what excites me about these kind of projects personally is that so what I can do is I can have a nice afternoon I can build a, a model which is always a, a fun hobby thing to do but for the paint job I can explore uh, paint treatments that maybe I, I don't have time to do or, or the budget to do on something like on a deadline or something that I just need to get done and I'm multitasking and I, and I can't experiment, right? I'm very interested personally in trying like a Aliens, Avatar, Expanse type of paint job where it's like an industrial color, like a gray or, or green or something. And then it has like those like OSHA numbers and color fields, like the yellows and the blues, and then that's weathered. So that's what I'm excited about. So I'm gonna build uh, these and I'm, I'm gonna try out that paint job. Um, and like I said, this is really cool that he sent me these. The Kickstarter is going on right now. I'll, I'll link to that. But even if you're watching this in the in the future after that's over, um, you know he, he has a site where you can go and check these out and get these. But I just love the idea that you can print the parts as you need them. All right. Well, I'm excited to dig in. So yeah, let's check this out. Print a block max. <laughs> So, checking out my loot. Uh, yeah, these blocks are, are pretty cool. I think this is gonna be fun. Just kind of looking things over, seeing what I got to work with, thinking about how I'm gonna approach this. And then I thought, you know what, I'll... He gave me instructions for two different versions, the chicken one and then like the larger one. So I'm gonna start with the chicken one. So what I do is I get all the parts I think I'm gonna need. I get my uh, sanding sticks. I, I don't know if I'm gonna need them or not. You know, I got the, the melty glue. And um, this first one just goes pretty quick. So I threw a timer on it just to sort of give you an idea. Uh, like I said, the goal was to have fun building but then work on the paint. So this achieved that. And it took like 10 minutes and I think that's cool because it means it's pretty simple. You could do it with a kid, you could do it yourself, and you know, it's not anything crazy. So it was actually really enjoyable. And also for me, it achieved the goal of, uh, you know, getting it made so then I could do my paint. So now for the next one here, I go ahead and just throw out the instructions. Now this is not me trying to be funny. This is because I knew I would peek at them and I really wanted to have the experience of just, taking the parts and seeing what I could come up with, you know? I, and, you know, we're, you know, we're human. <laughs> like, like a couple times here I get stuck and I'm like, eh. And I knew I would look at the instructions and the idea was to just have fun with this and see what I could come up with, you know, with the parts given, not knowing anything about this at all. And so my first try, you know, I think, you know, I'll start with the feet and well, yeah, I am think I'm a genius here. I'm like, yeah, this is gonna be great. And of course, <laughs> This doesn't work. And I'm like, ah, that's too girthy. It's too blocky. Um, so, you know, but then there's these like shoulder pad blades, kind of pauldrons. I don't know what they are in the, in the mech universe, but they're cool. And I'm definitely going to use those. <laughs> and I keep going back to those because I'm like, yeah, what am I going to do? And then I'm kind of determined in the beginning to put the little like um, head on there, right? So, you know, it's a lot of head scratching and 
with these blocks, it's cool because, you know, everything's made to fit together. So it's just a matter of finding what works for you, right? And then maybe you get close. And then what I ended up doing is, um, and these are great, you know, creative exercises, is just stopping and tearing it down and starting over again. And you see here, I'm still committed to the head. And this is the closest I got. I was like, hmm, almost, but I still was not quite happy with that. But, you know, I, I got something standing up, right? <laughs> So now back to the drawing board again. I know now at least these are the legs that I want. And I think I have my torso now, right? So I have the legs, I have the torso. And then I put on the brakes. I'm like, oop, you know, not sure which way the torso is going to face yet. <laughs> so now I got to figure out the head. And this was the aha moment. This was when I was like, oh, nice, it was worth messing around. So I'm gonna take those shoulders and I'm gonna make them the head, All right? So now I get like this alien kind of crazy looking head and I was really happy about that. And then this, I don't know what this piece was, but I was like, oh yeah, it needs like a little mouth. So it's kind of like, reminds me of like some kind of Star Wars droid that you'd find in the junk heap. <laughs> so now, um, you know, it's like you, you you go across a certain threshold with this stuff and you're like, oh, okay, this is it. And then you're, you're sort of off to the races. So now I'm just finishing it up, putting the arms and yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with that because now it's like I created my own head. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like a chicken maybe. <laughs> And there the buddies are together and I'm gonna hit this with a really heavy uh, Filler primer because these are 3d printed so it has those lines so I do a heavy heavy filler uh, Primer and then I put this base coat on it So now I have my masking tape and my colors right these really cool to me uh, Yellow and blue right? I want to just go real industrial. So I'm taking my masking tape here and I'm just figuring like you know within the model like okay this leg i'm gonna mask off and just looking for organic sort of natural places uh to to mask out where i'm gonna put my color fields and you know this is totally up to you you know you just kind of go with it i i tend to uh just look for sort of natural seams within the piece and then, you know, I have the thin tape, which is nice, so I can get around like those rivets and nuts in the knee and do something interesting. So now I'm gonna hit this with a clear. Um, I did the smaller one off camera. And what the clear does is it just helps when you're, you're painting something that's masked. When you put that clear coat, it helps it, it gives it like a barrier to help it from bleeding. I don't know if you've ever had that experience when you mask something and it bleeds underneath it. Uh, clear coat, uh, pick that tip up actually from Bill Duran over at Punish Props. Um, it helps to sort of seal that so you don't get that, that, um, that sort of uneven edge from the paint running under. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a chicken. <laughs> Now this blue is laying down really nice. Like the blue, uh, again, it's subtle, but I like I like the blue. The yellow off camera, I'm gonna have to hit that with two coats, which is fine. Um, but yeah, happy with that. So now I just gotta let that dry. And you know, a little time has passed and now the demasking, which is always fun. And it's still, bled a little bit so um you know i'm thinking in the future if i do this i'm probably gonna spray it if the brushing is easier but i think spraying will be easier i just got to get a proper uh airbrush kit and again another good thing about uh doing fun projects like this it motivates you <laughs> and um you know if i ever do this on a on a, a project where you know there's a deadline or we're filming it i'll have already had this experience and i'll know better so now this face is coming off <laughs> yeah i really like that it does it just reminds me i don't know chicken bride of frankenstein maybe <laughs> 
and just like those little details when when you take you know a couple extra minutes to mask i think it really pays off now all that is really bold right so you know we'll clean that up later but now i have a box of like decals um that i never used because i just don't use the decals when i kit bash and i was like you know what i should uh figure this out so i pick a couple decals that i think are appropriate for each model and this is something that i rarely i can't even remember the last time i did this so i figured out oh, this is a good chance to sort of brush up on this so basically you put it in warm water um if you're doing it hardcore like for real there's like a, a decal uh, solution that you put on before and after but you know for this I thought it'd be fine and I'm just looking for like little like military insignias and then I like to add just little like warning signs and caution and kind of like OSHA things I always think those look cool um, because they don't really capture your attention um, immediately but they're there and I think they add just a little bit of value so um, with this one I had all these great red decals from this plane so um so it ends up becoming um pretty much everything from that sheet <laughs> yeah and that just looks good but it all pops right we can't have that too clean so of course another clear coat you guessed it <laughs> you got to keep sealing this stuff in all right so two more passes so this i'm going to do a, a dry brush with the silver so i just want to uh you know i figure these things are banging around hallways and battlefields right so i'm gonna scrape them up really good and this is just a very uh light 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 dry brush right just barely kissing it right and it's nice to to sort of streak it over the decals um because i think it, it blends it into the model better and makes it look more uniformed so here I'm just doing like just a tiny bit and then now I have um, some burnt sienna and some black and these are just little torn off pieces of sponge, right? So what I'm gonna do is just try to do um, with the brown kind of going for like a, a dirt and then with the black, it's sort of like a, gives it like a chipped paint look. And like with the dry brush, you gotta be very delicate with this. Just a little tiny bit goes a long way. I mean, there's hardly anything on that sponge. And also here, what I'm trying to do is just around the edges of the decals, it helps to blend. And if I have any really poor like lines that are not straight, if I put a little bit of the, the black on there, it just makes it look like it's dirty rather than an uneven painted line, right? So we're we're hiding the crimes. <laughs> All right, so that looks good. So now another clear coat. <laughs> and the reason is because now we're gonna do the wash, the final wash. And um, we want it to look like mud, but we don't want it to be mud, right? So the clear coat actually uh, serves a, a very important uh, role. It, it keeps everything from blending together. Even though we're making it look dirty, it's actually not dirty because that layer before it and the layer before that, they're all protected instead of all blending together. They're on top of each other. And you know, those decals now they, kind of look a little real to me now instead of just like a, a sticker and yeah that looks good so now the final touch just to bring it back to life a little and get that metallic because we did do a sludge wash over the whole thing it's kind of like dry brushing with the rub and buff just a tiny bit of rub and buff on the edges and then in this case because they're mechs like on the nuts and bolts and on the gun barrels just that little little bit of of the rub and buff really makes it pop and um you know over these metal knee joints and over the yellow paint now it all comes together and i i know i'm gonna say it one final clear coat and that's it and now the beauty shots look at these guys they look like friends the chicken and the stubby <laughs> really really cool and just that right that decal is just a little something that adds value yeah but I, I like that guy yeah that was cool uh, I, I think they look good together in the same universe 
<laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun, right? Stepped out of my comfort zone a little, tried a new paint treatment, same weathering I usually do. <laughs> I know for a few of you it's too much, but it's the way I like it. Weather yours lightly, but I like them dirty. <laughs> So thanks to Joe Larson, the 3D printing professor, for sharing this kit with me. Uh, like I said, there'll be links in the description to find out more about these. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. And what's cool is to, you know, have a fun afternoon of building. These were pretty simple to build, but I sort of exercised my brain by trying a different paint scheme. And I, and I think I will do that in the future. The thing I learned from this was that Brushing it, it, it doesn't really give me a nice crisp line. So if I do this type of color field um, on a prop or a set, I'll, I'll spray it. And I think that'll be better. So had fun and learn something. <laughs> well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments. And be sure to check out the merch shop. I'm wearing a Space Goose shirt, practicing what I preach. Buying something from the merch shop really helps support the channel. This is the guy who does those uh, spaceships from like household items, shampoo bottles and egg beaters and crazy stuff. This is a Sriracha bottle. Um, he inspired my spaceship, uh, supermarket spaceship build. So I'm saying thanks to him. Practicing what I preach. <laughs> but just remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>